today we're going to be taking a look at a very old-fashioned way to heat up a fire hot enough that it can melt metal. I'm here again with my friend Joseph and we've got some leather and some other supplies and Joseph is going to teach us how to make a bellows that can heat up a fire hot enough to melt metal, is that right? Yes. Very cool. Yes, and this is for an upcoming project where we're actually going to try making iron from scratch, just like the Vikings did. But one of the key points for that is you need to get a fire just unbelievably hot to do that, right? Yes. Well, uh, less hot than you'd think because when you make iron, you actually never actually melt it. Melting iron, like, that was invented way, way, way after we had, you know, swords and stuff. And how hot are we going for? About a little over 2,000 degrees. Over 2,000 yeah, degrees. Yeah, so like not that hot. And how long does it have to go? Uh, like seven hours. Seven hours, so that is a long time. That would take probably several propane tanks worth of fuel. Yep, uh, but yep. we're not gonna use propane, we're gonna be using charcoal. Yes, and uh, cheeseburgers to power the human-powered bellows. Or maybe not cheeseburgers. Here's the basic idea. We've got a bunch of leather and we're going to cut and sew that into a shape that lets us control the flow of air heating up a fire. So let's look at some of those supplies we've got. First off, a Russian olive tree Yes, branch. and the thing that's important about this one is it's got nasty spikes on it all over the place. What? It's a fairly durable, rigid spike and it's quite sharp and this is one of the tools we're gonna to be trying to use to poke holes in the leather. So we're gonna give it a try and see how it goes, trying to make holes with this to, to sew it together. I mean, we're thinking primitive here, so no sewing needles, that would be cheating. We might cheat. We, just a little bit, we'll, if this we'll, doesn't work so we'll well. We'll try some of the primitive, and then for the sake of speed, we'll probably cheat. Speaking of cheating, these are very nicely round sticks. I, I did not harvest these off of a tree myself. I harvested these from Walmart. But for this, having a perfectly straight, smooth stick, that's really not important for what we're going to use. These are going to be sort of handles at the top of our bellows that we can open and close as we manipulate them. Now we have a piece of antler. I don't know if that's as pointy as the thorns, but it's probably a lot stronger. Yes, probably. Bamboo. Why do we have bamboo? Bamboo is for the air pipe. So we're going to have a bag made out of leather with two sticks at the top that you pinch closed. So you open up for air this way, then you close and push down but the air needs somewhere to go out to go to the fire, and that's what this is for. So this is what we use to direct the air yes. just where we want it. Now, bamboo will burn. What's the strategy for preventing that? We'll coat the tip in clay. And then, of course, we have leather. This is quite a bit of leather, and again, we cheated. We did not tan the leather ourselves. So we have quite a big sheet of really nice, tough leather. This is actually more industrial than it needs to be. Like, yeah. this is pretty thick, pretty high quality tanned hide and this is really a lot nicer than we need but if it's super robust and that means we can use it for a long time yeah this is artificial sinew in the old days they would take tendons from a dead animal but like the cow we didn't want to do that so this is a replicated stuff made of just some very fine fibers and coated with wax we'll probably use this for most of the sewing so what's gonna be our first step First step, we need to measure out exactly what we want the bellows to look like, and that's gonna be dependent on how much leather we have. We're gonna do four side panels and two bottom panels. The goal is to make two bellows. Yes. And I think that's because that way, as you're pumping air, you can always have one pushing air in while the other one is refilling. Yes, and one, it does two things. It regulates the airflow, and it also prevents the air from, uh, the bellows from sucking air in from the fire, which would burn it and cause problems. All right, we're gonna use this very authentic, primitive technology chalk marker. So let's make four rectangles. Four rectangles. As the sides, and you were saying we want them about one cubit yes. long and not quite a cubit tall. Cubit, if you don't know, is the distance from your elbow to the tips of your fingers. I don't know the exact scale, but of course, as you get taller, your arms also get a little bit longer. So let's, instead of the full cubit, let's just take it down by a few uh, inches, maybe. Maybe top of, the, top of the first knuckles. Very precise caveman style measuring here. To save time, however, we're going to use this pair of industrially large, sharp scissors. We've got four rectangle-ish pieces of leather cut out. Yes. So now we want a bottom piece that's yeah. kind of flat. Uh, I'm thinking just kind of like almond shaped. Yes, almond shaped would be just about right. Eyeball almond that you know, goes out Football. and then... Football. You take the marker. Okay, dokie. I'm just gonna take this piece of leather and hold it sort of up in this curve shape and then you can oh, just smart. sort of draw along that curve and then we'll know it's the right length.
So we've got a bunch of pieces. We now need to sew them together. So the order to do that in, uh, I figure we'll just sew along the sides to make kind of a, a envelope shape and then put the bottom on. Joseph is going to harvest a thorn. He just slapped me with this. <laughs> Fortunately, the part that hit me did not seem to have any thorns on it. Yeah. How are we doing on stabbing a hole in leather with a Well, I've thorn? broken three or four points off of this thorn. Now, I actually did stab a hole in this leather with one of these thorns before, but I'm now struggling to do so. It's just, the, the leather is winning. There are lots of primitive ways of making needles that can even get through leather. There are other types of natural thorn that are harder, that are sharper. We've got a piece of antler that we can get through. It's very wide very quickly though. So in the rich tradition of cheating, we've also got some metal needles, which even have eye holes in them to stab right through the leather. And we're gonna use those because I love metal tools. They're great. Poke a hole through both layers. That stabbed through fairly easily. So we have our sinew poked through. Kind of near the first one. Again, it pulls the sinew through. But now, while we still have this loop, we take the other end, this long end, and poke it through that hole and pull it all the way. And now, when we pull that loop down tight, we have a stitch right in place. And we have one on the other side as well. So we just need to keep doing that and go down the line, poking a hole, creating a loop, feeding the sinew through that, and just sewing the whole thing shut. And on my second side, I am going to leave a gap, just a couple inches so that we can either just tie the pipe right onto that or add our little pipe sleeve. Whew. All right, this bag has one side, two sides, and the bottom sewn on, and I've left this gap here. This is where we're gonna try and attach our pipe, but for the moment, we're just gonna make a mess by putting some sawdust there and showing that if I have this bag and then I pinch the top closed, we get a good amount of air flying out of the exit there. So, mess is everywhere. Joseph's gonna keep stitching up the bottom of that one. I am going to start adding some sticks onto the top and bottom of this. And we're just gonna make it so they fit pretty nicely in there and just have a few stitches. We don't need to stitch all the way along. I'll probably have three to five bind points, whatever seems like it's necessary to really hold it in place. Open it, pulls in air from the top, close it, pushes air out the bottom. Okay, update, this first bellows is, I believe, complete and in working order. Joseph is getting really good progress. He's got one more seam to finish on his and then a couple sticks and handles, but we did wanna show you where this one is. Handles up at the top, we've got these sticks in here. Those are rigid, so when we squeeze that, it holds the whole bag top shut. In the event that that's not quite enough pressure, although it seems to work pretty well, you can also sort of roll it over as you press down. That keeps the seal even better. These handles are there so that as I lift it up, I can hold it open. That way it doesn't draw the heat back up through the pipe into the bellows. You'd fill it up with ash and it would burn. It just takes in the air from the top. So you lift, close, and squeeze, and it just blows a whole bunch of air right out. This piece of PVC is just fit into a hole that I left at the bottom. I then wrapped a lot of this sinew down around it. It's in there pretty nice and tight, holds onto the bag. And uh, this size PVC, just happens to be the right size. We might, we might be able to get some marshmallows shooting out of this. Let's give this a try. I'm gonna see if I can shoot a marshmallow into Joe's mouth. <laughs> oh, oh, that was in your ah. Oh, slow motion replay.
All right, update time. We've got two completed bellows bags. Yep. How's yours working? It's functional. Very cool. You're using bamboo, so more realistic in terms of things you might find in the wilderness, although it kind of depends on what wilderness you have. But there's lots of different ways you can get a pipe shaped thing. Uh, my way is PVC, which grows on the PVC trees, of yes. course. Very cool. So now I think the next step is to test these out with actual fire. I think that's the next thing. And we are going to be doing an iron smelt. We're gonna be taking the iron ore, running through the furnace and trying to extract the iron out of that ore. And these are what we're gonna to use to keep that fire hot enough for hours and hours on end. So let's take these out and test them out yeah, in an iron smelt. It. Our bags are made and we've switched out the bamboo and PVC that we had before for this cool little bamboo forked shape. That way we can have both of the bags going into one spot in the furnace. Uh, this stake is here to keep it from sliding out backwards so it always keeps directing the air right where we want it. So Joseph, tell us about our little furnace here. So this furnace is called a bloomery stack furnace and the purpose of it is to transform rock into metal. What we're going to be doing is stuffing it full of charcoal and then layering it with charcoal and ore. And ore is just a stone that contains basically rust. And so as those burn down to the level of the air, they're going to slowly transform chemically into iron and then collect in the bottom. And then we're going to collect a big lump of it, which is called a bloom, hence why this is called a bloomery. So we've got our bags and uh, I think we can do a nice demonstration. We've already got stuff burning in here. You can see just the thick white smoke coming out of it. Well, probably half of that is steam as well. Uh, but what we can do now is we can pump with our bellows and we'll watch as this just gets hotter and hotter and I think pretty quickly we'll start having flames coming out of the top instead of smoke. Look at that, blazing flames coming out of the top. Now we've basically just smothered all that hot fire we got. Smoke as thick as any smoke bomb we've ever made. Our bag bellows are up and running. They're focusing a lot of concentrated air into our bloom furnace. Very cool. So Joseph, the next step is to actually try and extract iron ore, right? Yes, and for that we need iron ore. All right. Our next video we do with Joseph is going to be extracting iron from iron ore using our bloom furnace and the bellows. Look for that coming soon. Guys, that's it for today, but we've always got more for you to see. That box up at the top will transport you directly to our last video. You should go check that out. The other box will show you what YouTube thinks you should be watching next. And if you're not a subscriber yet, just hit this bomb to get in the club, and that way you never miss out on the fun. Don't forget to ring the bell, and we will see you in the next one. Talk to you then.